<sighs> so um, if you are absent today, we started our unit on intermolecular forces. Um, so here's the fill-in blanks of our lecture for today and um, a couple extra things too. So molecular for intermolecular forces are the forces that exist between molecules. Um, this is what we're not really used to talking about because usually we talk about the forces within molecules. And what I mean by that is if we look at um, water, we've talked a lot about the bonds that happen between the H and the O in each one of these molecules, like within the molecule itself. We know that this is a covalent bond, and we know that they're sharing electrons, and we can make the Lewis structure because of it. So we've studied a lot of those um, of those intramolecular forces. That's what we would call them. We, um, so the yellow stuff that you're looking at, those are intramolecular forces. Intra meaning within. So within the molecule itself, okay? So not going outside of its own molecule. Um, but what we're talking about now is the force between molecules. And so if you guys remember, I know it's a long time ago, but we talked about Lewis structures and how, um, if you guys remember, there's a lone pair or two lone pairs of electrons on each oxygen, and that gives each oxygen a partial negative charge. And wow, is this marker awful. Um, but those are, the, that's, those are the partial negative charge on the oxygens. And then if there's a partial negative charge on the oxygens, then you're going to have a partial positive charge on your hydrogens. Okay? Um, and so what we're talking about in this chapter is an attractive force between the partial negative and the partial positive charges between molecules. So we'll have a force of attraction there between that positive and negative charge, and we'll have another one here between this positive and negative charge and maybe one going like this between this positive and that negative charge. So it's an attraction between different molecules. That's what I mean by um, intermolecular forces. So this, these green things that I just drew, those would be intermolecular forces. And, and just for reference, the intramolecular forces we were talking about were the covalent and ionic bonding. Um, so intermolecular forces, we're going to learn four of them today, um, and that's going to be the topic for this unit, okay? So um, they're the forces that exist between molecules. Um, the boiling point and melting point of a substance reflect the strength of its intermolecular forces. And... Um, so if you have a higher boiling point and a higher melting point, that's going to be the result of um, stronger attractive forces between molecules. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so the first kind we're talking about, we're going to talk about, the first kind is ion dipole forces. Um, an ion dipole force is a force that exists between an ion, okay, and the partial charge on the end of a polar molecule. And if you don't remember what a polar molecule is, remember it's, a, it's any type of molecule that's not the same all the way around, like top, bottom, left, right, something's different, okay? That's a polar molecule. Like um, water that I just drew here, um, these were polar because the top of the molecule was negative and the bottom had two H's, so it's a bent molecule, it's not the same top and bottom. Um, left and right looks okay, but top and bottom it wasn't, so this would be a polar molecule. And all polar molecules are going to have a separation of charges, this, this negative and this positive. Um, and you guys are going to hear the word dipole a lot in this chapter. And dipole, that is just, all that is is the separation between a positive and negative charge. So when I say there's a dipole here, that means I have a positive pole and a negative pole. Okay? Um, so, let's see, where was I? Okay, so ion dipole forces are found in solutions of ionic compounds. Um, the best example I can give you of this is salt water. So for salt water, we're going to have water floating around, obviously. Um, and that water is going to be interacting with the salt. And if you don't remember what the formula for salt is, it's NaCl. Um, so Na will be perhaps here, Cl here. 
um, NaCl. <clears throat> Remember, when ionic um, salt is an ionic substance, and when ionic substances go into a solution, they separate into their ions, which is why I'm drawing them separated now instead of together as Na and Cl. And remember, when they separate, they get their charges back. So Na is in the first column, which is why it got the positive one charge, and chlorine is in the um, halogens, and so it's going to have a negative one charge. Okay, so let's put those um, partial charges back onto oxygen. So oxygen has a negative partial charge, and then the hydrogens have the positive. And again, that's because most of the electrons are hanging out on the oxygen. And so electrons are negative, so that's where the negative charge comes from. Um, so what's going to happen is we've got this attraction between positive and negative. So the positive sodiums will be attracted to the negative oxygens. And the positive hydrogens will be attracted to the negative chlorines, and so forth. So what we have is, it's the easiest name to remember, we have ions being attracted to dipoles. So it's the ion-dipole attraction. Okay, so that was the first um, intermolecular force that we went over. The second one that we went over are dipole-dipole forces. Dipole-dipole um, forces exist between polar molecules. Again, molecules that are not the same all the way around. Um, and the attractions increase with increasing polarity. Um, the, an example I could give you of this is if you had a container full of PCl3, for example. Um, if you drew the Lewis structure for PCl3, you would find that it's trigonal pyramidal. So these are absolutely going to be polar molecules, um, not the same all the way around. So we see more electrons on the P, so we're going to give that the negative charge. And then the chlorines are what's left, so they'll have the positive charge. So we've got our dipoles now. And again, dipole is just a separation between a positive and a negative charge. Um, so what you're going to see is an attraction between positive and negative across between molecules. So um, this P will be attracted to that Cl. Okay. Um, so that's what a, a dipole-dipole force would be. So when you have um, negative dipole attracted to a positive dipole of two separate molecules. Okay, so pretty straightforward. Um, so that's dipole-dipole forces. Um, London dispersion forces. Um, you also might be, um, might hurt, be, oh boy, I'm getting tired. You might hear them called Van der Waals forces. Um, same thing. Okay, so don't get confused by that. Um, and it's the motion of, of electrons in an atom or molecule can create an instantaneous dipole. Okay, instantaneous meaning created and destroyed within an instant. Um, and an example of that, let's say we're talking about um, some neon molecules or neon atoms. Okay, and I'm going to give them some electrons. Oh, these are a little big. They'll pop back. Oh, I think they're too big. I need to separate these guys a little bit more. <clears throat> okay, so I'm just giving them some random electrons. I neon has 10 electrons, but obviously I don't have room for all 10 electrons to be floating around. So um, neon obviously is not a polar molecule. There's nothing to make it polar. It's the same all the way around. It's just one atom. Okay, um, so here are its electrons, and what we know about electrons, they're always moving. Okay, so all these are in constant, like they're moving around and they're spinning. Okay, and that's happening on all of them, but I don't have enough fingers. You get the idea. Okay, so the, the electrons are going to be spinning around each one in constant random notion. Um, and occasionally, what can happen is that for this molecule, or for this atom of neon, all of its electrons will line up on one side of its atom. And I'm talking about in a pure instant. This doesn't exist for very long. But remember, all electrons have a negative charge, okay? So that means that 
this now we've got kind of like a wall of negative charges over here next to another atom that has electrons as well and we know that like charges repel each other so what that's going to do is make these electrons move over to the side to kind of repel away from these electrons here so they're basically distan distancing themselves from that neon and then this guy he's going to move all of his electrons away too because they're repelling each other okay so these electrons are repelling these electrons and all of a sudden if you guys notice we have lined up our electrons and so what's going to be left so on this side of the neon atom we're going to have an overall negative charge meanwhile over here we're going to have um, there's no electrons on that side so we're going to have a net positive charge on that side same thing here this side of neon is going to be net negative and over here it will be positive here this side is negative this side is positive so what's actually going to happen now we've got this induced dipole is what it's called it's like created induced means created where we have a positive side and a negative side and a positive side and a negative side and so what's going to happen is this neg this whole negative side will attract that positive side of this neon atom and this whole negative side will attract the positive side of that neon atom and so for a hot moment so a split second there's going to be this weak attractive force between the positive or the positive side and the negative side of neighboring atoms or molecules and that's what induced dipoles are okay and this can only happen well this happens in all molecules that have electrons because electrons are always moving um, and it's the only force that nonpolar things have because they don't have dipoles so um, before I get ahead of myself let's fill out some notes here um, so let's see, a London dispersion force is a force that results from attractions between in or induced dipoles. And London dispersion forces are present in all molecules. Okay, so the example that you guys can write down is the one I just gave you. You can, um, if you draw neon, and this is like its electron cloud, okay, full of electrons, negative signs. And then all of a sudden, just instantaneously, all these electrons move to one side of neon. And I swear this, this does not exist for very long. It's, it's a moment. It seriously can happen in a millionth of a second. But all of its electrons happen to be on one side of the atom at once. And so this would cause its neighboring atoms to move to that side. So then we would have its neighboring neon moves all of its electrons over. And this neighboring neon then moves all of his electrons over. And then we see a positive and a negative end. And so we would have our negative end here, negative, negative, negative. And we'd have our positive end on the other side, positive, positive, positive. And then we'll have an attraction between positive and negative. So um, this negative side is attracted to that positive side, so attraction and attraction, and that would be an example of um, London dispersion forces. Okay, so it's really, it's, it, and I swear this, this happens and then it destructs itself, and then it happens and then it goes away, and then it happens and then it goes away. So it's not something that you can rely, rely on, and it, because it only exists for a moment, it's really weak. You can't really rely on it. So um, that's our third one, and on to the last is hydrogen bonding. Um, <clears throat> so hydrogen bonding is a special type of intermolecular bond that exists, um, let's see, between the hydrogen atom and a covalent bond. And it can really only happen when you see HF, HO, or HN bonds in a compound. Okay, so that, that part's really important. Make sure you're paying attention to that. So hydrogen bonding is stronger than dipole-dipole and intermolecular, or than inland forces. And the best example I can give you of, of this is water itself, because water has two hydrogen bonds in it. Okay, so again, there's our water. We draw in our negative. And we draw in our positives. And then we have our attractive forces between negatives and positives. 
So maybe this negative is attracted to that positive over there, and this negative is attracted to that positive, and this negative is attracted to that positive, and so on and so forth. Okay? Um, so it happens only when you see an HFHO or HN bond. So we see an HO bond in water, which is why we can say that it has hydrogen bonding. Um, so just so you know, in class we went over a couple more examples of this. So um, I had people identify, so if I gave them a few more examples. Okay, so if we look at all these molecules, we can um, evaluate whether or not they have hydrogen bonding. So what I mean by this, is if we had a container full of just that compound, okay, so we're, we have a whole bucket full of this stuff, will that compound exist with hydrogen bonding between its molecules? Okay, that's the question. Um, so in order to figure this out, if it's yes or no, we have to find, does this compound have an HF? HO or HN bond. So we take a look around. I see H's and I see O's, but they're not bonding together. Okay, they're not bonding actually literally together. So H's are not bonding to O's. So this would not have um, hydrogen bonding in it. Okay, so the answer here was no. Um, here we do see an O bonding to an H, which is one of the required bonds. So this one would, yes, have hydrogen bonding. Here we don't even see a hydrogen anywhere. We see N's, O's, and F's, which are definitely things that we need to see, but we don't see any hydrogens, so this one will be no. Here we see N bonding to H, which is a required bond, so this one will be a yes. And here we do not see, um, we see a bunch of H's, but we don't see H bonding to F, H bonding to O, or H bonding to N, so the answer here is no. Okay, so just to help you elucidate that a little bit. All right, um, the last thing we went over are these two parts right here in class. <clears throat> so the relative strengths, so in terms of these forces, um, covalent and ionic compound, or ionic bonds, will always, always, always be stronger than any of the four things that we just talked about. Um, they're always going to be stronger, okay? So because those are in the intramolecular bonds. Um, so keep in mind, those are always the strongest. And then we go down the chain. So the next strongest is, are the hydrogen bonds. Followed by ion dipoles. Followed by dipole-dipole. followed by London forces. So these guys are the weakest, and these guys are the strongest. Okay? Um, <clears throat> so that's the order of their strengths. So to, to do this sample problem then, if we want to evaluate, put these in, the, in, um, in order of their stronger, of increasing um, intermolecular forces, we can do that. So if we look at um, neon and H2 are both going to be nonpolar. So if they're nonpolar, the only intermolecular force that they're going to have are London forces. So both of these only have London forces. Um, so now we have to figure out which one is weaker. So neon is all by itself, while H2 is a molecule. So it, I would say that neon, because it's all by itself, is going to be the weakest of the attractive force, and then followed by H2. Okay, that's because both of, the, both of these are nonpolar, so the only thing they have is London forces, which is the weakest. Um, but H2 is a molecule as opposed to just being a single atom, which is why it would be a little bit stronger. Um, the next strongest thing in this list I would see, I see CO. Okay, CO is a molecule and it's polar. So polar molecules, in addition to London forces, also have dipole forces. So that's the next strongest on our list, so that's going to be here in terms of increasing strength. Um, 
followed by, so our next strongest ion dipole, I don't see an example using ion dipole, but I do see an example using hydrogen bonding, the HF, H bonding to F is going to be the next one for sure, so hydrogen bonding comes next. And then lastly, BACL2, that's an ionic compound, it's not a molecule, it's actually an ionic compound, and that one is... So this is the answer to a little bit of homework today in class.